jump in. We'll just incorporate them later. Cool. I'm going to shut my door really quick. Okay. Sounds good. Not that my voice doesn't carry over into the seat through the holes anyways, but anyhow, good morning, guys. Good morning. I am so excited. So I was like, we need this group because I want them all to myself. No. <laughs> Jake is fine with that. He wants me to have him all to myself as well. He's fine. Everybody needs to get on board. <laughs> No, I am um, very excited um, to see all your face. So many faces. This is cool. Usually everybody's like camera off. It's 9 a.m. So, and if you do have your camera off, totally fine. I just really love it when you can turn it on. So that's kind of cool. But um, so what we're going to do today, pretty simple. We're going to do some introductions. So just get ready. You are going to have to speak. <laughs> so when I, um, you guys are going to get to introduce yourselves, I want you, you're going to get to, sh I'm going to share the purpose and intention of this group while we're doing this, have a little bit of training and then q um, question and answer at the end. So whether it's regarding something we talked about or just like a question about being new, like something that's pressing on your mind, this is a great time to get to share that, okay? And so I'll start the introductions because while I'm talking, some of you that need like to think before you speak, and that is not me. I just speak and then I think about it and I'm like, that probably shouldn't have been said, but too, too late now. But um, I'm gonna let you figure out what you wanna say. So we're gonna share um, your name, obviously, a little bit about your family, whatever you wanna know, whatever you wanna share. Cause sometimes we don't really wanna share that much about our family totally fine. I'm not judging you, okay? Um, it depends on the day, right? And then I want to hear um, what you did before real estate, before you were here, started at Platt, and then just one time you felt like a badass in your life, you know, like whether it was last week when you were two or five or whatever, like that one time you felt like, you know, I was pretty hot right back then or when I did whatever, okay? So I'll start with me. So, you know, my name is Crystal White. And before, well, my family, I have a daughter that's 21, who's an overachiever like her mom. She just graduated a semester early from college um, with her bachelor's degree in December. So I'm excited. And her name is Ashley. And then I have a little boy that's 10 and he's one of the best human beings on the planet. Just don't tell my daughter that that's how I introduce him, okay? Just, <laughs> it's not good for you to do that. Um, his name is Blake. He's a really cool kid. I have two dogs that are very important, Chase and London. I got a 75-pound boxer and a four-pound Yorkie, and it's crazy. Um, I um, Before this, I used to be a Mary Kay sales director. So you guys ever see the pink, driving around the pink Cadillac? Like that was really me, <laughs> that was my life. And so I was a Mary Kay sales director for like eight years. And prior to that, I was in the real estate industry, but just on the lending side as a more, as a account executive. One time I felt like a badass, like I got this, was um, probably the first of uh, many cards that I got to um, earn the use of in Mary Kay. And that was like, I didn't realize it until afterwards, but they said it was like a big deal that I earned a car in my first five months as a Mary Kay consultant. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so I was like, let's do that again and again. So I really, that really was a, um, um, that was a big deal um, and a big accomplishment for me. So it really set the stage for me feeling like I could kill it in sales. So that's me. And so I'm just gonna start by the way I see you, okay? So don't kill me. Jamie, you're up, girl. So if you can tell us names, you got all that stuff. If you forget something, I'll remind you, but take it away. <laughs> um, well, I'm Jamie Santos, and um, I have um, two adult step kids that live in other parts of the country. And then I have two boys that are teenagers that live here uh, with us now. 
Um, I live in Broad Ripple area, Canterbury, South Broad Ripple, whatever we want to call it. I don't want to get into a dispute. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, but I just moved back. I was in Carmel for like eight years and uh, moved back here. And I'm just so happy to be back. I used to live in Irvington and in Rooting Kessler and in uh, Butler Targington and uh, was not thrilled with my time in Carmel, but um, I'm so excited to be back. Um, and what I was doing before this, um, well, right before this, I worked for a company, an environmental company. We did trash recycling for malls and uh like uh the big office buildings in washington dc and in new york and um needless to say when COVID hit um like 80 percent of our business was malls so um they had to shrink up their purse strings pretty quickly so um but that's what i was doing right before um this and i guess the other thing is when i last felt like a badass um Probably this is like kind of a small thing, but it was pretty cool. So I, over the summer, started um, started a I started to build furniture out of um, reclaimed items, um, and so I built with like these ancient tools. And what I found out was like a saw blade that was way too dull, and I shouldn't have been <laughs> using it. Um, I just got some pallets and I built a bench, this huge like seven foot bench um, and sold it. And it sold like, I literally put it up on Facebook and it sold like within three minutes, someone bought it. Um, and I was like, what? Like I'd never done it before. I just winged it. I grabbed some pallets and, and made it. And um, so that was pretty exciting. That was cool for me. <laughs> I think I priced it too low was what my friend said, but you know, it was 200 bucks. That. I'll take it. For you free, have free definitely materials. labeled yourself a badass, officially. <laughs> so <laughs> I've set um, the bar Rosie, low for everybody else. <laughs> yes. Rosie, your picture is next. So we want to hear about you. Oh yeah. Um, I'm Rosie. Um, I live in Broad Ripple with my boyfriend, Jason my family um and before this i was working in the tech industry i worked for a tech startup called lessonly uh, their offices are just now down the street um on 16th um in the time i felt like a badass um, i can't believe this is the one that came to mind but this is it so i'm going to share it with you did you guys have spirit weeks in your um in your high school yet um, so like it's a week leading up to homecoming or whatever. Um, I won spirit queen my senior year. It was because like I dressed up the best and like had the most pep or whatever. Um, and I was just like, never thought I would be on like any kind of like court of in any way, shape or form. But I was like, I am spirit queen. And it's still something I'm ridiculously proud of. So yeah, that's mine. We will now address you as Spirit Queen. <laughs> Thanks, Crystal. <laughs> Thank you, Rosie. All right, Steph, you're up next. <laughs> all right, sorry, Pickle is on always all my calls. This is Pickle. Um, so I'm Steph Gray, and ooh, I gotta look at your notes, Rosie. And um, my family is in the indie area i grew up here but we um, my husband and i moved back from chicago last january and we're actually in escrow on a house in fountain square um so we we were in escrow last fall it fell through and and now we we have a hopefully everything goes well we have a house coming in our neighborhood we live in now which is awesome um i before real estate i have my own event production business so i'm a freelance global event producer and um talent buyer so i do like artists buying music festival buying for corporate events pickle and um just all sorts of different events with like nike and gatorade and beats by dre and youtube so i um worked like fashion week all the way to like corp big corporate events to programming music festival lineups and stuff. Um, time I felt like a badass was, 
I would say um, I helped book an outcast reunion before we, they were going to have a big outcast reunion in 2014, 2015. And that was really exciting. And we, um, we thought we were going to be the only East Coast outcast reunion. And then it turns out they were doing like 14 shows and they didn't tell anyone, but they're outcasts so they can do that. Um, so that sucks. But I do have like signed outcast merch and had to, we had to like order white Hennessy and like sneak it into the, it was like a whole thing. So I've done a lot of artist relations stuff, but that was like kind of a cool moment to be like, we did that. So that's awesome. it. Um, thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Moving back over here. We're going to have Jahira up next. Uh, hi, my name is Jahaira. Uh, I am from Venezuela. Uh, I leave Venezuela when I was like uh, 24. I went to live to Panama. I live in Panama about three years. And then I moved here. Uh, I'm a mom. I have a daughter of uh, two years old and I'm pregnant with a boy. And yes, uh, I'm a mechanical engineer and I work as a mechanical engineer in Venezuela, also in Panama, but here uh, I didn't want to work uh, as a mechanical engineer. So I started a business with my husband uh, flipping houses and I realized that I did, a, I did want to start a career in real estate as a realtor. So um, the time I felt like a badass, uh, I, was, I think was in Venezuela. Uh, I was working with a, a oil company, but I started myself uh, my own business. It was a little store of um, milkshakes and smoothies. And um, my husband and I, create the, our own mix of ice cream. So it was a big success and it was so huge. Everyone uh, were, st were staying like making lines to buy our products. So I feel like a star. <laughs> so yeah. Jahira, when are you making this homemade ice cream for us? <laughs> That's what I need to know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I left everything in Venezuela. I left my, my, my machines, my ingredients. So it's hard. It's hard to make it. Oh, my God. Well, someday. Yeah. Uh, we did say I, know to to, I know how to create a good milkshake and a great smoothie. So I know it. Nice. You made Seth Gray really happy. Nice. Thank you. Well, since the company is all about recruiting people named Jacob or Jake, I have to be a little more specific. <laughs> Jacob H, you're up next, bro. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Jacob Hari, uh, family. I moved here from Evansville with my wife, Kelsey. Uh, we have two dogs. Kelsey works at Lily and we currently live in uh, Fountain Square for about another two weeks uh, and then we're moving over to the near east side so excited to go find out a, um, a new place and discover that uh, before this i worked at gatorade um, i studied food science and uh, my mba at purdue so i worked at gatorade and then also at allison transmission so currently still at allison transmission and, and purchasing over there and the time felt like a badass. Um, so last year I signed up for a marathon. The world kind of shut down, uh, but then ended up just running two marathons by myself, even though there's nothing else going on. So um, that was enjoyable, but now I'm kind of like on a, a train. I want to start running a bunch this, this summer. So excited. That's a big deal to do that without the, the crowd participation and other <laughs> runners that is huge. So my, my wife called me an idiot for it. So you, you call it huge. She, she calls call you an idiot. We <laughs> call you a badass. It's okay. all good. <laughs> Luckily, she's not on this training with you. So we all think <laughs> you're a badass. <laughs> okay. The, if we keep getting shifted around. All right, Britt, you're up next. 
I'm Britt Borum. I also live in the Canterbury, South Broderpool neighborhood like Jamie and um, Rosie. I am the mom of two beautiful girls who are five and two. And um, I most recently worked for the IU School of Medicine in executive recruiting in HR um, and left there last February to spend more time with my girls. Um, but always knew in the back of my mind that real estate would be an area I'd be interested in re-entering when I was ready to do something um, outside the home. So my husband owns a, a recruiting business and we do that together as well as um, me taking on some real estate. Um, I mean, the first thing that came to mind about feeling like a badass is if you've ever been pregnant and delivered a child, <laughs> then you, um, start, I mean, it's like a superhuman experience. So that was the obvious one for me. Yes. Yeah. However they get here, they get here and you feel amazing. Especially when you do it again after you did it the first time. I mean, come on. <laughs> so thank you, Britt. <laughs> Mommy Britt, thank you. And then we have Jacob A. Next. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Jacob. And um, my family is originally from half Israel and half Iran, and they moved here. Um, they all live in Carmel now. I spend most of my time between Los Angeles and Indianapolis. Um, this is my dog, Nala. She's sleeping underneath me right Aww. here. <laughs> um, and one time I felt like a badass was um, before, before real estate, I started a... Um, I don't like to say before real estate because I like to do things. I, I like to continue doing things, but primarily my business was music festival promotion and photography. So uh, when I was about 24, I started a company that did that. And we crushed that industry for a good four years. And um, about a year ago, year, uh, two years ago, year and a half, I was um, traveling. Through, sorry about that. I was traveling through Greece and I was, um, you know, my team was doing really well. And I don't know if any of you guys know of the band called Widespread Panic, um, but they're, uh, they're a pretty uh, well-renowned Southern rock and roll band. They're like, you know, they're pretty high up there in terms of respect in the rock and roll hall of fame. And um, I got a call from their manager and while I was in a crappy little hostel in, in Greece and I, I closed our biggest account while I was in a um, hostel that didn't have running water or any electricity at the time. Um, and I remember, you know, getting off that call, kind of being flushed with adrenaline because here I am trying to make these gentlemen think that I'm sitting in a conference room somewhere and that everything is all fine and dandy, but I'm really in a corner of a hostel in, in, in Athens trying to get Wi-Fi on the phone, make sure it doesn't crackle too much. I couldn't hear half of anything they were saying, but I closed the account and um, we got to um, coordinate and promote the one of their biggest festivals in beautiful Telluride, Colorado, which was a major win. Um, so that was that was a time that I felt pretty uh, strong and, and in my in my power. Awesome. I love that. All right. The things we can do without running water. <laughs> so let me see where we're shifting to. I've, we have Jake. So I'm going to just give you the lineup. Jake Forth is going to go next, then Eliza, and then Zachary. And then Lydia. Yes. I was just going to share. I figured she might not remember after four names. I was just going to tell her. All right, well, my name is Jake, obviously. Um, I live in Chatham Arch with my partner and my three dogs. And my family is kind of all over the country, so it doesn't really depend on the state. Um, and before real estate, I was in property management. And then before that, I was in operations management for a retail company. And I did that for a couple of years. And I always knew that real estate was what I wanted to do. So when Corona hit and I had the chance to get the uh, real estate classes for like half the normal cost, I was like, all right, well, I have free time now. I might as well go do this. And so I started in May of this year and then I uh, got my license uh, late last year. 
And I guess the one time I felt like a badass was I've always, I grew up riding four wheelers and dirt bikes and I've always wanted a Harley. And for my 25th birthday, I bought myself one. And that was like the big, like the first big purchase that I ever made that wasn't like a requirement. It wasn't a car or, you know what I mean? Like a house. It was just a fun thing. <laughs> okay. Nice. All right. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Eliza. Um, before uh, real estate, oh, look, I'm already out of order. Don't, uh, my family. I have four kids. We're a blended modern family. Um, the oldest is a boy and then three girls. So they range from 22 to 14. So it's exciting around here. Um, I, uh, my education is in marketing, but I never actually worked in marketing. I worked in marketing zero. Um, I then got my several years after that, I got my esthetician license and I did that for about 12 years. Oh, sorry. Um, I have a buyer right now that calls me like 20 times a day, just so you know, that's them. I just talked to them before this call. That's why I was late. So um, luckily it's my one and only, so I have plenty of time. <laughs> um, so my, um, uh, I quit my job um, January 1st of 2020, not knowing what was ahead for 2020, but I feel like that uh, was a real badass moment for me. I had wanted to do real estate for on and off for 20 years and I always had like one foot out the door and I just had to like make the jump, you know, and luckily I was fortunate enough to be able to do that. Um, it didn't work out exactly the way I had planned, but, uh, but here I am. Mm -hmm. Love it, love it. Next, next. Zach, you're up next. All right, good morning. <clears throat> yeah, I'm Zach. I have a brother named Jake, so. That helps. Um, I'm from like Monrovia, Indiana. Um, I've worked in commercial development for you know my adult life. Um, yeah. What's uh What's next? What's a badass moment? Yeah. When was the last time or a time you felt like a badass? <sighs> I'm trying. I, I don't want to like incriminate myself. I have a pair of shoes in the bell tower at Lafayette Courthouse. So at the steeple of the courthouse, if you ever been there, I left a little memento. Oh, you left the shoes there. Uh -huh. If it ever Got comes it. up, you guys, Zach did not tell us that, okay? Do not tell him. <laughs> Thanks. We know Zach likes to live on the wild side. Thank you, Zach, for that. <laughs> that tells us a lot about you. Um, and then last, we're going to have, last but not least, Miss Lydia. Good morning. Well, um, what can I tell you? Um, Lydia, did you get to hear what they were sharing? Oh, uh, okay. Tom, I was kind of late. Uh, I was no, not invited fine. to it. So you're I request fine. the invitation. So can you repeat the question? Yes. So it's your name, a little, whatever you want to share about your family, what you did before real estate. Um, and then one time you felt like a badass. You felt really good in your life accomplished about something. Okay. Well, my name is Lydia Vidana. Um, I have four kids. Uh, they are my biggest inspiration. They're my fuel. I love them so much. Um, about me, uh, I had the idea to be in real estate for many years, um, but I ended up being a, as a community manager because the money was good and I had the opportunity. So I didn't end up uh, taking the license test after taking the class many years ago, but it was always in the back of my mind. So I worked as a community manager for over seven years doing sales uh, administration and you name it, rehabs, things like that. Then after that, I work on my own from home for over four years, just doing sales on online. 
uh, buying like from auctions, pallets, things like that. That's what I used to do. And right after that, I did insurance. I was an insurance agent, which I, I really liked. And um, I just ended up doing this because this is really what I've been wanting to do for so many years. So I feel really, really happy just to be doing this. It's been a very good year. Last year, it was my first like uh, five months and it was really good for me. So I think I am where, where I need to be. And something that it really make me feel proud, I think is when I was probably like 26, 27, I was divorced with three kids. I purchased a home in Westfield, Indiana, and uh, it was in really bad shape. I cannot afford anything else. It was a repo home and it needs like, it needs an entire uh, remodeling. And uh, every, everyone made fun of me back then. Everybody thought that I was really stupid for doing that. And that's my home right now. And I feel so proud when I finish up the product at that age, being a single mom with three kids at home. So I think that was like something that it really impacted my kids. And I'm really proud of like, I did it. That's it. <laughs> I that cannot hear you. Good. I think we can all appreciate that. The um, Instead of having you guess why I asked you all that, if, if you have something to write with, I want you to write this down. Yeah, somebody said boss. Mm -mm -mm. It's one of my favorite words. <laughs> So I want you to write this down. If I did it before, I can do it again. If I did it before, I can do it again. And so whatever your moment was that you shared with us, and let's all, let's, I think we're all in agreement that you probably could have shared more memories of feeling like a badass or doing something great. But if you did it before, you can do it again. And so there's going to be times, even though this might be a newer venture for you, but you've bossed up before in your life and you can do it again. You know, um, you can have that same level of success here in real estate. And so sometimes you're going to have to reach down deep a little bit and be like, you know what? I may not have closed 5 million or 3 million, whatever your goal is, but I did do this before. And a lot of times the same skills that it takes to do that is the same skills that it takes to reach your goals in real estate. So give yourselves a round of applause. I love talking with badasses. So I want to give you the intention behind our little group. Number one is I wanted to create community with you, with each other. There's a reason that um, I want you guys to be able to have each other, to be able to kind of draw on sometimes and know, hey, they're newer, kind of like me, or maybe you heard that somebody else has kids or whatever it is, whatever that common thing is. I want you to be able to feel like you have that community with each other and to have some healthy competition with each other. It's kind of fun to have that. But I also want you to write this down. That comparison is not allowed. We don't compare, like that is so not allowed. We're not gonna be comparing each other or, you know, well, she's this or he's that. But it is fun to have some healthy competition to find somebody that maybe if that drives you, if it doesn't, then don't do it. But um, definitely you can cheer each other on this, kind of like you guys are your own little group here. So I hope that um, over the next 90 days, over the next three months of you meeting in this group that you can kind of develop some, um, some relationships with like-minded real estate agents that are plat, plat, your plat family, maybe outside of your actual team. And so you'll hear me talking as I'm talking to you all individually and together. I love to use analogies because simple is just works good for me. If you ever see me doing something complex, probably Michelle, Rosie, or Gigi Creek, like they, I came up with the idea and then they made it look all fun and creative. Believe me, that was not me, right? Okay, maybe the intention behind it was me, but that's it. And so um, one of the things, one of the analogies I like to use with family, because some of you, most of you are on teams. And so, um, and some, a few of you are not, but this is kind of how it works in my eyes. Like your team leaders, kind of like your mom or dad or whatever. And then you've got me being your grandma. I mean, like, 
you know, the cool hip granny, you know, so <laughs> I'm your grandma. And so that if you have team, other teammates on that team, those are kind of like brothers and sisters, right? But we all know that families do best, humans do best, children do best when they get to have both their parents and the grandparents, and then they have relationships outside of their home, correct? So think of you all as like those friends at school or in the neighborhood, because it's kind of weird when you just have your friends that are just your brothers and sisters, right? I don't know about your brothers and sisters, but I love them, but I needed to have other people in my life too, right? So that's what they are. These are your other people. And so other plat agents and different things. So if you look at it in a family, that is kind of how that works. So everybody plays a role. Everybody has an important part and nobody replaces another. It's just, you get to add more and more and have a more fulfilling relationship. Okay. And community. The, um, I look at notes a lot because I'll be like, Woo! Oh, it is 11 o'clock. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that to you. So I'm going to stay on task. But um, I want to, I also wanted you to be able to shut out the noise of our monthly agent meeting. It's great. And I think you should attend those. Those are great. But a lot of other things, I kind of wanted you to be able to shut out the noise and kind of focus in on what do I need to do at this stage of my business? Because I'm a little bit newer and some of the things they're talking about, like I haven't even reached that yet. Right. So that's kind of why I wanted to separate you a little bit so that you can get that focus as well. So this is going to be to educate, motivate and recognize you guys and then give you some inspiration. And so I want to start off with a little recognition before I do a little bit of a training piece I have for you. And so here's what I want to recognize. If you showed up today and got on the freaking Zoom call, give yourselves a hand clap. Mm, 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 mm. If you have your camera on and you're on the Zoom call, give yourself a hand clap. Uh, 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 uh. If you have started your post licensing, which is the 30 hour that's in your, if you've received your 90 day book, it would have been in there or Rosie or Michelle or somebody's mentioned it to you. So if you have started your post licensing, please hands up. We want to see those hands in the camera. If you have finished it, keep your hand up. Anybody finished that 30 hour yet? Okay, not yet, that's okay. But let's give Jamie and Eliza hand claps and finger snaps for starting that, awesome. So if you are having any struggles with that or you're kind of like, I wonder, now you know Jamie Santos and Eliza Wilson is already doing that. Who is a good person to reach out to? Like, girl, what are you thinking? What happened or whatever, right? Community, create that. Another thing I want to recognize is your master list of contacts. How many of you have written out your master list? Like you started dump, doing a brain dump, writing out names that everybody know. Let me see those hands in the air if you've done that. Let me see them, let me see them, let me see them, let me see them. All right. Keep your hand up if you have at least 50 on that list, at least 50 names. Okay, Jamie's being a show off. Awesome. Jamie, do you have at least 100 on the list? Awesome. Let's give Jamie to go around and move on. 200. Ah, ah. Okay, that is huge. Okay, so awesome, awesome. I love that. So what I want us to do, I want to get into a little training why that is so important because next time I want to be able to be like going crazy wild, shooting off confetti because all of you have done that. Here's, let me sh share a little bit. I'm going to talk about two things and then just anything you guys wanted to hear talk about. Number one is your contact list. I have spoken with a couple of you already, so you've heard this coming from me, but I want to give you an, an explanation. In this book, whether you've been working in it or not, one of the big things with growing your contact list, I want you to think of it this way. When you're, when you're thinking about my business and it's an empire. I want to build an empire. Right? Like I want to build this great solid business. What is the first thing you have to do if you're going to build any type of building, regardless of the size? You have to put a foundation down, correct? Right? Foundation is so important. Foundations are not pretty. They're not fun. They're not sexy. No one's like, ooh, look at my foundation, right? We like to focus on windows. We like to focus on doors and finishes and all those kind of things, right? Because those are fun and that's nicer. But none of that will last if we don't have a foundation, correct? 
Your contact list is your foundation. This is part of your foundation, your 90 days, making sure you set up. So if you think of the foundation and how we're gonna build something great, your contact list needs to be expansive. And so if you were thinking of a wedding list or a vow renewal list or something like that, who all would be on that list? Who all would you invite? Don't start thinking about what you don't want to do is start thinking about who actually is a homeowner or who don't categorize them. If you know them, like they're breathing, they're alive, you know them and they know you, then they just need to go on your list. Then you start to come in. So it's wide, right? And then you start to come in with, um, okay, let me start to categorize them. Um, who's out of state? Who, who can I get contact information from? One of the reasons this is so important, you all, I've talked to a couple of you and you told me that you didn't know this, but did you all know that you can actually get referrals? You can get paid a referral fee for referring agents to your out of state family, friends or whatever. Did you guys all know that? If you knew that, shake your head. Let me see some, some crowd participation. Yes. Okay. And so if your family in California or now, if they're in Greece, Jacob, I mean, like I might, that might not be as, I don't know how that would work in another country, but if I sell real estate everywhere. All right. That's <laughs> my boy. That's it. <laughs> that's my guy. That's my guy. So, um, but you all, we can, we can get in the logistics of how that works later, but it's literally just a marrying of, if you have a favorite cousin that lives in California and she decides she's moving, she needs to real estate and you come to us to help you find a realtor there and you connect them, you can get 20, 25% referral fee just for making that connection. So what I'm getting to you is do not leave, and I want you to write this down, don't leave money on the table thinking too hard about your list. Your list just needs to be a brain dump of everybody you know so that you have that and you can refer back to it at some point. Then you start to build it up. So it should look like this because if the base is wide and the foundation is good, then you can build a stronger empire. You can build a higher. If you're being really narrow, then it's going to limit what you can build on that, right? And so <clears throat> how you work on that, getting the list. So the first thing, getting the names down, then going back and find the context. I know this sounds very like, elementary, but it's so true. If you write down the names and then try to write down the phone number, how you know them, their email, all that, it's going to stop your flow. But if you just, number one, just keep writing down, just writing down all the names. And I'm curious, Jamie, did you type yours in first or did you hand write yours down first? Um, I downloaded my contact list from my computer. So I have a, an Excel spreadsheet. That was not, well, Jamie's fancy, okay? <laughs> Jamie's really fancy. <laughs> I am a big fan of pins, but I like that. That was smart because you know you know those people. So um, doing that, getting all of that first, I think that is the main thing I just want you to hear me say is don't leave money on the table thinking just be, thinking through like, who you think would buy or not buy or whatever, whatever. Um, when you get those down, when you come up with a list of a hundred or more people, because I, and if you really, really, really have done all the brain dumping you can do and you're like, I cannot come up with a hundred people, whatever your real max is, I want you to text me, honestly. And we can go, everybody say next step. You can take yourselves off the of mute because I love crowd participation, unless you have loud in your background. But next steps, next steps. Next step. So I am not one that likes to give you a bunch of stuff because then you walk away and you start to feel overwhelmed. Have you guys ever felt that? You feel overwhelmed or you start skipping over the stuff you don't really want to do and you start doing the other stuff, but then it messes us up. So next step is getting the brain dumped down and writing all that stuff out and then reaching out to me, texting me saying, hey, Crystal, I got that. What, do you, what am I doing? I, I got the names down. And then I even went down and wrote the contacts. And sometimes that's just social media. 
Like you may not only, you may only be able to contact them through social media and that's fine. But what you're going to do with them and how you're going to reach out, it's going to take some time and some money, but I think it's well worth it. And it's exactly how I've been able to start my business without only using, <clears throat> excuse me, only using my sphere and using op open houses. And I say open houses because they're good, but and I'm good at them, but they're not my favorite things to do, but I do them because they're good. Okay. <laughs> and so um, I want to segue into, um, so everybody got that, right? You're going to do the brain dump and you're going to talk with me, Jamie, we're going to talk about what you're going to do with those names because you already have all your names down. Right. Okay. I want to switch into open houses a little bit. How many of you, let's be honest, raise your hand. If you're like, mm, I really am not looking forward to doing open houses, put your hands up. Britt, thank you for being honest. Anybody else? Okay. Everybody else is like, okay. Has How many of you have at least done one open house? Raise your hand for me. Keep your hand up if you've done more than one. If you've done two, three, four, five. If you're just a bad out, just an open house queen, right? That's great. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, Steph, really quick, would you say you've liked that you felt you've had a lot of success in open houses or would you say it's it's a little bit of a challenge which of those two would you say um i would say uh a challenge i probably have had one yeah. that was like really busy and the rest have been kind of okay awesome awesome so what i want you all to write down is do the right activity long enough and the desired results will follow do the right activity long enough and the desired results will follow. The key thing there is finding out what is the right activity, right? Because there's a there's 101 ways to skin a cat, 101 ways to do real estate, right? You got to find your right ways and make sure you're doing it right. And then the next step is how long do I keep doing this before I can expect the results? It's not just a big mystery game. You can talk to your team leader or reach out to me and kind of figure out those averages, like what should I be seeing? Everybody's averages can be different, but we can still give you an idea. We can get an idea. So here's some strategies with doing open houses. Doing them in itself, that's good, but here's a, some quick strategies since you're brand new and that's kind of where you're focused. I love that you all are open to doing them, like you want to do them. So <clears throat> number one is um, with doing your open houses is finding some areas that you want to work in, okay? That is like finding areas that you wanna know more or you wanna work in, like especially your neighborhood or whatever that are with Platt. That's number one. That's not always gonna be the option of be available. You may wanna be in a certain area, so you might wanna expand that a little bit. The other thing is making sure that you like the house and that you go in and preview the house. Right? Have you guys ever done that? Have you, have you guys, how many of you have been looking for like opportunities to do open houses? Can I get hands mm -hmm. outside of, okay. Would you say it's been more of an, what would you say Jacob and Jake, because you have not done them yet, but it sounds like you're open. Has there been specific reasons why you have not? There has been okay. something that's kept you from doing them or you just have not done them? Tell me. I've only been really focusing on real estate for the past two weeks because I got my license in December, but I was gone and I was sick. So just waiting for the opportunity to arise. Okay. Okay. Um, other Jacob, <laughs> Jacob H, would you, is there something specific that's. To be honest, just understanding the process of, you know, what do I need to do and talk to and set up and, and all that. Yes. Okay. Awesome. The um, that is going to be part of your your new agent training in Fe Fe I hate saying that word February because people say it wrong and I try to say it right and then it's annoying. So, anyways, in February is um, going into more detail. It's going to be an open house panel to kind of talk you through that. Just. In the meantime, like if some of you are wanting to do one this weekend or next weekend, what I would encourage you to do is make it part of your schedule. Every Monday and Tuesday, you go fresh onto our website, I mean, onto my board and you look up whatever plat listings are available. 
just put it in your daily schedule every Monday or every Monday and Tuesday. That's what I do. I go out and I look for, instead of waiting for an opportunity to come to you, you get in the driver's seat, you be the boss, you go out and you start looking. That's, that should just be part of your routine every Monday and or Tuesday. When you find one, because you would like to be able to connect with that, you want to, let's say there's two or three, you may want to go inside and take a look and make sure that you like it that you feel good in the house, that it feels like something you could sell and you feel good in. So then you want to go and take a time, make the time to preview and look through that house. Excuse me. I recommend having it listed in the, um, on my board and Zillow, all of that good stuff by Thursday is good to do that by Thursday, because usually people are looking online for open houses and stuff like that by like, on Thursday and Fridays, a lot of buyers are scheduling out what they're going to do for the weekend. So the early, and write this down for me regarding open houses, early word gets, early bird gets the worm. So here's some inside tips for, this is what I mean by that. If you're waiting until Thursday before the weekend to start looking for open houses, then you're competing with the other agents who are looking for open houses too. But if you're coming in on Monday and Tuesday when everybody else is not thinking about it, then it allows you to start connecting with the, you can start reaching out to those agents immediately, texting them, hey, can I hold open your listing at such and such? Do you already have anyone or do you plan on doing an open house? Many times they may not have even planned on having an open house and they're just like, okay, you know, sure, you can go ahead and do it. I wasn't even going to do it. Um, as a person who promised that only way I would join real estate is if I didn't have to do it, ever do an open house. And then that's been like a big piece of my business. Um, I will say this, it's never a waste of your time. It's never a waste of your time. You take work there. If it's dead in there, you could be, you take that contact list, you take your 90 day book, whatever it is, and you can start working, but you don't text your husband or your, your kids or family back, send me pictures of the dogs. What are you guys doing? <laughs> I, I want to look at you guys. Like, no, I am, you put in your mind, I'm clocking in for two hours. I'm coming in here to work. If someone comes in, that is gravy. That's nice. Otherwise this home is going to be my office. That is why you want to go in and make sure you feel good in the home. And it's somewhere you want to be at because you are going to be in there for two hours. So this is what I did as a newer agent for one or two years. And that is Mondays and Tuesdays, I've reached out to agents and I text them. I reached out. I didn't, I didn't even do the Facebook thing because I wanted to make sure they were getting my message immediately the, um, on Monday and Tuesdays. And then that I made sure it was getting, here's the other thing, you guys, make sure that you communicate with that agent will this be going I want to make sure it's going to be um advertised on all the platforms and all the websites realtor Zello all of that don't just assume okay you take ownership you tell them I want to make sure that that's going to be done and I would like that to be done by Thursday okay and um so that you can get so that it's online and you can get your signs out, all that kind of good stuff. As far as signage, um, Thursdays are okay. Thursdays, the earliest, you don't want to do it before then, but Friday is probably the best because some areas don't let you do it before the before Friday. Okay. Um, my last thing that I want to open up for a question with the open house, because you're going to have an open house panel is make sure that you respect the agent that you're doing the open house for, because you want them to call you. And at some point, the goal is you don't on Monday and Tuesdays that those agents are reaching out to you. You want to be so freaking good that that's like, I want Jahira holding my house open. Jamie, can you hold my house open again? The, how, the way you get that is how you professionally handle that agent, okay? So that is re the point of contact on Monday and Tuesday when you're reaching out. And when you're there, when you leave, you leave them detailed contact. Do not make that agent have to reach out to you and ask, how'd the open house go? And you don't say it was good or bad, okay? You, you say things specific like this. Here's what you're, here's what you're telling them. Number one, how many people showed up? 
you're letting them know what the feedback was so that they can give that feedback to their clients, right? And any suggestions you may have, any thoughts or anything, because you just sat in the house for two hours and it's a good chance that that realtor has not done that, that listing agent, if they don't do open houses, they haven't even sat in it for two hours. Does that make sense? So you are important to them, just like they're important to you. So don't feel like they're just doing you a favor. It's a group, it's a partnership, okay? But you let them know, like when you leave, you let them know that, that so that you're being respectful and trust me, agents talk, right? You want them talking about you. Just know this, people are, people are gonna talk, agents are gonna talk, you can decide what they talk about. Give them something to talk about. Let them talk about how, oh my God, Britt like came in here and just handled it. Like I wish she could just show all my houses for open houses, right? So you can control that, you can do that. And it gives you a big pat on the back. You may not hear them say that, but you'll notice it with them asking and reaching out instead of using Facebook. Facebook is fine. But you guys, directly, your direct connection with them sets you above a lot of the other ones, okay? Um, any questions so, for me? Yes, yes. Can I jump in and say something really quickly? Um, since a lot of you guys are brand new, um, I wanted you to know that on our Google Drive, we actually have a list of every single agent's contact information. Um, so if you like really quickly wanted to get everyone's name and number in your phone, um, you can go and use that. There is a way to actually like download that list and then just import it directly into your phone. So you don't have to, um, like directly, uh, enter in everyone's name and number, but, um, just let me know if you need any help with that. Nice. I love that. And Crystal, I was just going to say, for me, um, when I did the open house, the open house wasn't well attended at all. But what was really useful still was the before preparing for it and running CMAs and understanding the neighborhood and all that. And then, you know, seeing if, if I was getting it and kind of talking to the agent about it. That was really helpful practice for me. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. I, that, um, I didn't want to get off into that much because I know you're going to have an open house panel. I just really wanted to give you guys that mindset with putting that in your business plan now that with your schedule and having, because the panel may not talk about that as much. Um, but the reason I say it's never a waste of time because you show up when you're at your other jobs, you're nine to five. Usually you go, you get up, you show up for work. You don't get paid that day, right? Like you get paid for that day, but it's not that day. Real estate is the same thing. That's just, just part of your job. You get up and you show up. And sometimes it's the showing up that gives you the energy. And it's, I put on some lipstick. I shaved my beard. I combed my hair. I got dressed. I like made effort. It makes you feel like a professional and it feels like I'm going into work instead of sitting at home um, doing whatever, right? And so um, getting up, showing up and the things you do to prepare for the open house, you get the way you get good at things is you keep doing them, right? Would you agree? Like you keep, I don't know about you, but you may not have started off like an awesome kisser. Like you might not have been like the best kisser in the world, but I mean, after you did it a few times, you were like, yes, you want to kiss me. Like I'm amazing, right? That is the same thing. Like get up and show up. So don't, I guess what I really want you to hear me say is don't wait for like that perfect opportunity, the perfect house. Like if that comes great, the looking is good for exercise for you. The preparing, all of that is building a muscle and it's just going to make you a greater agent regardless. Okay. Anyone else have a last comment or thought um, before we close out? Anyone? I did have an open house where the lockbox didn't just like not work. Like the agent was like, oh, that's the lockbox I have to use this screwdriver to get into. It wasn't great. But and I've now learned I'm always going to bring a screwdriver. Hey, you know, I'm telling you. It was a little you. embarrassing, but yeah. On the job experience. Yeah. I love that. Thank you, Steph. I haven't <laughs> ran into that lockbox, but I'm going to put a screwdriver in my car now. Yeah. 
Oh god, it was bad. I had like four people waiting on me, and I was like, "Start working." Oh god. Like, yay! But now you know, right? Awesome. Anybody else? <laughs> no one it. else has. Oh, sorry. Someone else talking? No. Okay. No one else has any questions. I just wanted to close out with some like reminders. Um, so this is obviously a brand new group. This is designed for your first 90 days um, in real estate about, we'll like let you guys determine like when and how you want to like transition on. But after this group, we have a group that meets the fourth Thursday of every month at 9 a.m. Um, and that's called the newish group. Um, we'll get into more things. We'll interview more experienced agents there. Um, but very similar to this group, informal, um, a way to build community and to get trained. Um, and then today, uh, we actually have the monthly agent meeting. That's for all of our agents. Um, you are more than welcome to come to that, although I don't want to eat up your entire day with plot meetings. So sorry for scheduling two in one day. Um, but for this month, it's on plot commercial because we're opening up a commercial division of plot. Um, and we just want you guys all to know about it. So just want to let you know that that's coming up. Um, and then February, new agent training starts uh, the first. I think it's the first, maybe the second. Um, anyway, tune into your calendar invites for that. But we will see you all soon. I have a question for you. I have a question. Uh, yes. Is another meeting uh, at 10 a.m. or is it today? The new or um, the monthly agent meeting is today at noon. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Yep, um, you're welcome. I would love when me or Rosie will probably send an email out, but for you to if you have a pressing thing that you would love to hear about next month on our call, I would love for you to text me or email that to me so that that can be incorporated. And I'm hoping we have more open houses that people have done that we can celebrate next month. You guys have an awesome day. Bye. Sounds great. Bye, everyone. Thank you. You're welcome.